Looks like a broken broom. Only the stick is left. Why not? Might be useful at some point. I don't need any souvenirs. Maybe later. A childhood without chocolate. That's unimaginable. That is a rather random statement. Don't even think that I haven't seen you. Put that back. Unbelievable. The seller has cut two holes into his newspaper so he can watch the stand while reading. But why though? There are no customers around. Hello. Yes? You wouldn't give me that box of chocolates for free if I asked nicely, would you? Who do you think you are? Leave me alone if you're not buying anything. Can I pay for those chocolates by credit card? Do you have a MasterCard? No, American Express. Can't you read the sign? It says only MasterCard in capital letters. And now you are driving away my customers with your loitering. Mister, you could be a bit more polite. Are you by any chance interested in the well over there and the workings? Not really. What's so interesting about a well? Now come on, it might hide the greatest treasure of the Knights Templar. Knights... what? Templar! Templar! Knights Templar! Didn't you pay attention in history class? Didn't you pay attention in history class? I never went to school. How long have you had this shop? Since that crazy professor over there started believing he can find some treasure down the well. But that's possible, isn't it? He won't find anything. Two weeks ago, I told him I had lost my wristwatch and asked him to keep an eye open. Did you get it back? Yes and no. I found it near the well, but now it's gone again. My god, you're not real good at taking care of your things, are you? That's not easy if you have to watch the shop all the time because some brat wants to mess about with your goods. I even cut holes in my newspapers so I can see what's going on while those thieves think I'm reading. Have you caught anyone yet? Certainly. That brat over there tried to steal a box of chocolates. I caught him and spanked his ass like in the good old times. Maybe I can find your watch. If you want to look for it, fine. I've stopped looking for it a few days ago. I'll only lose it again. Right, okay. Why does he keep losing it? Is it too big for his arm? Or is he just stupid? The boy reminds me of young Maguire. I wonder what became of him. Hey you! What? Me? Yes, you. Do you have a minute? What are you doing in a place like this? I live here, sir. In the street. In the nature. You're not serious. I earn a living from polishing shoes, begging and stealing. Nice to meet you. A cheap-looking wristwatch. Seen from close range, the watch doesn't look as cheap anymore. There's an engraving. Ilak al Kalb. That rings a bell somewhere. Right. That's the well. Hmm. It goes down about four meters. That's the old man's bag. I wonder what might be inside. Although I'm filled with guilt, I snatch an item from the bag. It's a thread. A thread from what? The bag or something from inside the bag? A man of about 60 is examining the well. Interesting. Hi, my name is George. Ah! Oh, 
Pardon me, you made me jump a little. Bom dia, my name is Professor Aruda. What are you doing with the well? This isn't a well. It's an antique cistern. Cistern? What's that? Holy mother. It's an underground container for rainwater. Uh, and what is it that you're doing with this cistern? I'm examining it. I can see that, but why? I'm an archaeologist, and I'm about to make a really important discovery. What discovery is that? Ah, are you interested in history? About a year ago, I would have asked myself the same question until this thing with the Templars happened. Oh, you do seem interested in history. Do you have some time? I can tell you the whole story. Um, sure. Well, as you might have heard, Portugal was a paradise for the Templars. Besides France, it was the first European country in which the Order established itself after its foundation in Jerusalem in 1119. In 1128, Queen Teresa presented Casusure to the Order as a gift. It lay near the Crescent Front. Crescent Front? You mean the front line with the Arabs? Ah, the Moors, correct. In 1147, Teresa's son and heir Alfonso, a Templar, conquered the Arab stronghold Lisbuna with the help of his fellow knights. Today, Lisbuna is called Lisbon. Alfonso declared Portugal's independence and became his first king. In return for the Templars' help, he gave them a stretch of land in the heart of the country, where the Templars built this castle. At the time, the Order's Grand Master was a man named Gualdim Pace, sometimes known as Galdinus. Domar became the Templars' military headquarters, so to speak. What happened then? In 1291, the last Christian bastions in the Holy Land fell, and the Europeans blamed the Templars. Trouble was at hand for the Order. And then a French spy called Eskew heard about the Templars' satanic practices from a disgraced ex-Templar, and reported this news to the French king. Philip IV? Ah, you know of him? A little, but go on. Well, at the time, the accusations revolved around a mysterious graven image called... Bahomet! Huh. Are you sure you don't want to tell the rest yourself? You can skip the bit about the Bahomet part. I'm kind of familiar with that. Ah, are you also aware that the original idol is believed to be here in Tomar? That's a new one on me. I got the information from the transcripts made by the Inquisition. The idol itself was never found. But there is still an image of Baphomet within the castle. It is engraved on one of the bricks in the kitchen wall. If it were to be removed, it is said the ceiling and with it the whole building would collapse. Hmm, my mission here might be a little harder than I first expected. Back to the Templars. Well, on Friday the 13th of October 1307, Philip IV had all known Templars in France arrested. Even in Spain, where the Templars had eliminated the Arab threat, people turned against the Order because they no longer needed the Knight's protection. In 1308, the Spanish Templars escaped across the Tejo to Portugal and occupied the stronghold Almuron. All their treasures they took with them, and it is assumed that they were later brought here to Tomar. But what made the Templars think they were safe in Portugal? The Portuguese king, Dinis, hadn't forgotten what the Templars had done for his country and was still grateful. He granted them sanctuary. In fact, it was Dinis who re-established the order under another name with the elder Joao Lorenzo. They lived here as the Order of Christ and even kept their trademark, the Red Cross. Can you tell me something? Sure. What role does Prince Zi Hang have in this? I have evidence that the Templars were somehow connected to the Chinese nobility. That's true. Jacques de Molay asked Prince Dorima Cha II for a hundred thousand soldiers. And if he had got them, they might have changed the course of the battle. Though it would still have been very close and probably bloody. He didn't get them? No. The prince doubted Molay's loyalty, and after the negotiations, he dropped the Grand Master 
like a hot potato. De Molay swore revenge, but it all came out differently. I assume today's Templars want to take revenge on the Chinese nobility for the treason. For treason, they feel it was. Only nobody knows exactly where the core of the old nobility is now. But what about the cistern? A cistern? Ah yes, the cistern. I will come to that. This cistern is far too refined to have served as a mere water butt. I believe the Templars hid something extremely important here. Wait, did he say extremely important? Maybe he's talking about the seal I'm looking for. Tell me more. Do you have any idea what it could be that they hid here? Who knows? Maybe the Templar seal that was lost when the Order was destroyed. Maybe the Fifth Gospel, which Christ is said to have written himself, and was believed to have been in the Templar's possession, as with the Holy Grail. The seal! The return of the Templars! Right. The time of reincarnation. The hour of revenge. The dawn of a new empire. And a single seal is supposed to do that? How could the Templars have done that, Professor? The question should be, how can they do that? Can do... Yes, George, can do. After the Templars' extermination, the seal vanished. Philip the Fair had hundreds of soldiers search for it. It was the iconic symbol of the Order. He knew what power the seal possessed, and according to the legend, still does. What power? You weren't listening, George. The power of return. Are you telling me this seal has magical powers? Don't be stupid, George. The seal itself does not. But I assume it can trigger some kind of mechanism, which could prove Einstein's theory of space war. Right, okay. I don't understand. What's Einstein got to do with this? By means of space warp, it is possible to travel into the past. And why hasn't anyone made a trip to the past yet? How do you know no one has? Are you telling me? Uh, no, no, I only wanted to show that you can never be sure, George. Remember that. Do you believe that people have traveled to the past? Uh, not yet, as there are no machines that can maintain the gravitation field. The power of the field collapses within milliseconds. So there's no need to worry, right? I didn't say that. The fact is, nowadays, there are machines that can open the gate for a short time. Only they need something to keep it open, to stabilize it. And that's where the seal comes in. How can such a tiny seal stabilize a gravitation field of this size? It's the belief of people, George. Millions of people have died for their belief in this emblem. It has developed a force stronger than the gravitational field, and thus the seal can maintain the gate. That's the mystic part of the story. So the Templars need the seal to stabilize a gravitational field and to travel into the past. But where's the sense in that? Why time of return? Listen, the gravitational field enables time travel. But only for a fixed span of time. 700 years. The penny hasn't dropped there. Think about it, George. What 700th anniversary do we have in three days? The Battle of Paris! Exactly. The Battle of Paris. 10th October 1303. Thousands of Templars died before the city gates in an attempt to kill the French king and seize power of France. As France was the military force in Europe at the time, it is hard to imagine what today's Europe would look like if the Templars had won the battle. What now? We must stop them. The new Templars will try to get hold of this seal and use it to travel back 700 years, one day before the Battle of Paris. That will be the 9th of October. They will take modern weapons and reinforce the Templars' troops with their own. The battle would be won easily. Everything we know today as a modern democratic society would disappear even from our memories. At least, that's what I assume. No one really knows what consequences an alteration of the past would have for us.
why is it Return of the Templars, then? Now, you can't interpret that literally. What they mean is the symbolic return. The Templars' culture would return to the present by this alteration, unless we stop them. What if the seal isn't down there? Then may God help us. So what are we waiting for? Let's climb in, get that thing up here, and save the world! I don't think so. The Portuguese Ministry of Cultural Affairs has forbidden any excavations on this site. What? But why? Who knows? But the fact is, I can't go down there, and neither can you. What if you happen to doze off for a while, and a total stranger to you, say an American tourist, fell into the hole in a totally unintended and still careful way, and once down there he found... Forget it. I appreciate scientific spirit, but I will abide by the law. But we're talking about our future, Professor, and you want to go by the law? There won't be any laws to obey if we don't act now! Is there really nothing that could make you leave the hole for a minute? I'm afraid not. Damn. Okay, I'll take a look around. Sim, por favor. The professor is very relaxed about life as we know it changing forever in three days' time. I found your wristwatch. Thanks! How about a tiny finder's reward? You expect me to give you a reward? Now listen, I find your watch, sacrificing valuable moments of my short life in the process, and you won't give me a reward? Okay, okay. Here, you have a keyring. Please excuse my rudeness. Why is this guy even here? There are no tourists. It's not anywhere near any busy hotspots from the look of it. I get that this is an archaeological site, but still, it's very out of place. Hi, it's me again. But I have already given you your reward. Aren't you feeling like reading anymore? I don't have anything left to read. I already know this paper by heart, but what business is it of yours? Just curious. I'll be off then. And goodbye. How about reading a magazine? But that is French. Damn, that totally escaped me. Well then, I'm lucky that my mama is from Bordeaux, huh? Pardon? Just give me that and go away. The shopkeeper forgot to cut holes into the magazine. But I fear he might see my shadow when I lean over the stall to steal the chocolate. No, he'd be bound to see my shadow. Possibly. This is how we get around that. We, we need to make this... I'd say fishing pole, but it's basically a long stick with an anchor on the end. Great! I have the chocolate! So, you're worried that he will notice your shadow, but you're not worried about a rope dangling wildly in front of his face. Could you do me a favor? Do you see that professor over there? He won't let me work at the well. Could you distract him for a minute? What do I get for it? Let me think. You know I never managed to steal anything from the souvenir seller. He always seems distracted when he is reading his newspaper. But he cuts holes in it and looks through them and notices everyone who comes near. I swear to you, sir, once I tried to take a box of Berg chocolate sweetmeats, but he got me and spanked my arse. 
Since then, he has chased me away whenever I have come near this shop. And I think he has a reason to. Stealing isn't the right way to make a living. But I didn't have money, and I have never eaten chocolate in my life. I can understand that. A childhood without chocolate. That's unimaginable. Will you help me if I get you the chocolate? Sure. I'd be happy to, sir. Maybe I should have spoken to Gamine before I stole the chocolates. Here's your chocolate. Give it to me. Who did you want me to distract? The man at the well. Okay. I will steal his bag. I'm good at that. Great. The boy has stolen the man's bag and the man has run after him. Now the well's unguarded. Hmm. It goes down about four meters. But as the inside of the well is rough, I can get my hands into the gaps and get in or out without too much trouble. I better not touch anything. I can't believe it. The professor was right. The Templars were here. This brick looks different from the others. It bulges out of the wall. Intentionally? Forget that. It's too hard for my bare hands. The brick looks unsound, though. Finally, we have some use for this screwdriver. Having finished up the brick with the screwdriver, one half of a key is revealed. But where do I find the other half? George Stobart, tracing the Templars again. That's one half of a key. Close up, I can see the slit is a keyhole. Next to the idol is a small gap. <laughs> wow, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> wow, what am I supposed to say? Hmm. Looks like something's hidden underneath it. I rummage around in the rubble and I find the second half of the key. It doesn't work. These parts don't hold together. And there is one new mechanic in this game. We can actually disassemble certain items. Yes, that's it! Something that I don't believe has been made clear yet. Hmm. I can hardly believe my eyes! It's the seal! I can hardly believe my eyes! It's the seal! Yeah, you, you just said that. We've outrun the Templars. We've made it! I must tell the Professor. No, you will never get this seal! Give it to me, Professor Aruda! Now! Even though you betrayed the Order by your sudden disappearance, we will reward you. Never! George, run! Monsieur Stobart, good to see you back again. The feeling isn't mutual, to be honest. You have something that belongs to us. Oh, really? Flap, shoot the professor, and then get Stobart. This puzzle isn't too hard. A long flight of stairs. I guess it leads outside, to safety.